yeah, it just got cut, I broke up a little bit. Yes, I know I've got a message pop up here saying your internet connection is unstable. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but it's running for now. We'll just go with it. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So yeah, by the way, that was my uh, Darth Vader impression. Horrible. Um, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> hi everyone. Welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation, where you come to upgrade the software between your ears because you are somebody who's curious. You're somebody who wants to know how to take their life to the next level. And you want to get inside the minds of other people who have created tremendous amount of success for themselves, people who can be considered as super achievers. And my goal is to bring them on so we can learn from them, follow in their footsteps and essentially create the same level of success that they have managed to achieve. We talk about hustle on this channel, hustling hard and Hustle is a word that I think is associated with energy, with focus, with being purposeful, with being intentional, with living in life with alignment with your core values. And that's basically what a lot of our guests talk about. And today I have somebody who is absolutely incredible. We had a quick catch up before we actually jumped on and started recording. Um, and she is just working on so many different projects. She's full of life, full of energy and absolutely full of value. Her name is Natalie Sager. She is an author, a speaker, a teacher, a mother, a meditative a yogini, and she's also passionate about holistic health. <laughs> She talks about helping all beings live in pure health with an abundance of happiness and she calls herself the modern hippie mama. So with that, let me welcome, well, let's, let's, let's all welcome, not just me, let's just all welcome Natalie to the <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. I really want to know how your journey actually started. Um, yeah, so we could spend probably hours talking about the journey, but I, I will, <laughs> I'll try to cut and paste the, those that are most important and most relevant. Um, so once upon a time before I was pregnant with my son, uh, my older son, Jonah, I have always been very into health and wellness. Um, I started dancing at a very young age, and that's that's always been something that's been true to my heart, following my passion in my physical body. And what ha happened over the years was that my physical body was starting to show me signs of wear and tear, too much stress, pushing myself too hard, and not really listening to the whispers that, that my body was giving me. And um, one of those whispers was in the form of GERD. So that, that is an acronym for gastroesophageal reflux disease. And um, so basically, it's like heartburn times 10. And it was Ooh. something that my, I was experiencing, yeah, for, mm. for many, many years. And after seeing several doctors and specialists, um, I was told several things, one of which was that it was hereditary, meaning that my dad had acid reflux, my grandma had it. And so that was kind of the angle from which doctors were coming from. And they also suggested that I cut out certain foods. So tomatoes, um, really highly acidic fruits, spicy foods, red wine, coffee, all these things. And I, like a good patient, listened to these doctors and started to implement that into my life. And I, they put me on a medication, which was called protonics. And so I was on, it's a proton pump inhibitor, which is supposed to help with the acid reflux. But what I came to learn was that even after cutting out these specific foods and taking medication, I still wasn't feeling great. And um, so when I was pregnant with Jonah, I started realizing that I did not want to be on medication, neither in pregnancy nor postpartum when I knew that I was going to be breastfeeding. And that was really important to me to get off medication during that time. And so I started to explore kind of alternative ways of thinking, of living, of eating. And I was told by um, 
this wonderful woman who actually ended up being my doula for my second pregnancy. But um, I went to get a prenatal massage from her and she said, oh, you know, I just read this study about gluten, how it affects lots of different digestive um, kind of distress. And I said, really, that's so interesting. I've never heard at that point, and we're talking seven years ago. So I hadn't heard that gluten had any sort of correlation at all. I, you know, like I said, I had heard about the acidity and the caffeine and the red wine and blah, blah, blah. And so I said, that's really interesting. I think I'm going to try it. And so I came home and I told my husband, listen, we're going to go gluten. <laughs> and so my, my game plan was to eat everything in the house that had gluten in it and anything that came into the house would have no gluten. So we kind of had this gradual shift into a gluten-free lifestyle. And um, it was wonderful. It was challenging, of course, because it was incorporating all of these new ways of thinking into a habit that we created for, for years. And, um, but the benefits that both my husband and I felt were pretty much immediate. And when I say immediate, everything is relative. When you are removing something from your diet that could potentially be inflammatory causing, um, it takes some time because your body has been accustomed to that for, you know, for me, it was 30 years. And so, um, but after two to four weeks, we started to really notice different things happening to us with the removal of gluten. And then fast forward when my son Jonah was born, he cried nonstop. We used to bounce him on a stability ball, like holding him <laughs> like this for hours and wow. just to get him to calm down, to get him to fall asleep. And needless to say, this was taking a massive toll on myself and my husband. And then I spoke with um, a beautiful woman named Jennifer Cho, who's an international board certified lactation consultant. And she said, are you eating gluten? And I said, no, I cut it out. And she said, oh, to go has to be dairy. And I, I swear to you, I cried that night because cheese is, was, why, was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> my husband actually, he proposed to me in a, you know, those big blocks of cheddar that you can get carved into the big block will you marry me so just to give wow. you an idea of how much <laughs> i loved dairy and so for her to suggest you know you've got to cut out dairy i was i was heartbroken and wow. so i did it because when you are you know pain is a wonderful motivator and a crying baby is a wonderful motivator desperation <laughs> is a wonderful motivator and all of these things i was like you know what i'll at least try and so so I did give up my dairy and within a couple of weeks, I had a brand new child. He was crying less. He was much easier to console any sort of like digestive stuff that was, had continued with me even from the removal of gluten was completely gone with dairy. And so it was, you know, as they say, the proof is in the pudding and it was so true. Like as soon as I started to eliminate completely and it wasn't like, oh, I'll have a little dairy here. No, it had to be completely gone in order for, for us to both feel much, much better. And so as a result of that, um, I just completely dove into the whole idea of food and how it affects our bodies on so many different levels that we don't ordinarily think of unless we're presented with, you know, a situation like mine. And so I, my husband and myself, we enrolled in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but it's uh, the world's largest nutrition school. Right. And we went through that program at 11, 12 month program. And we got a ton of out of it. And to be honest with you, we had educated ourselves so much prior to enrolling in the program that a lot of it was just validity for what we had learned. And the whole idea of holistic health coaching is that, like you and I had talked about earlier, is that when you are living holistically and you are viewing your life holistically, what that actually means is that you are incorporating every area of life and every area of wellness, not just the food, not just the exercise, not just the meditation, but everything because it's, it's full encompassing. And that's what really truly provides you with optimal and vital health. 
And so I started to do holistic health coaching with private clients and I did workshops and seminars and things like that. And, um, and made me feel really good to be able to help a lot of people and to see like really witness these amazing transformations within these people's personal lives. And, um, I had some, some very, um, how do I put it? I had some clients with some really intense stuff going on in their lives. So whether it was cancer or, um, arthritis or MS, you know, I had these people that were coming to me with very serious problems and were also seeking, of course, medical attention for that as well. But the medical system tends to just focus on one area, whereas a holistic health professional will look at every area to try to help bring homeostasis into the body and the mind and the spirit. And so as a result of my studying and um, the work that I was doing, I was starting to become more exposed to different communities and different groups. And um, yeah, so I ended up with my second pregnancy being in a substantially different place mentally, emotionally, and physically than I was when I was pregnant with Jonah. And so my second pregnancy was delightful. I had, I was just, I was a barefoot pregnant woman and I loved it. I, and, and I really was embracing this whole modern hippie mama lifestyle where it was more alternative, more naturalist, um, more earth centered. And, and it started to make me feel more like myself than I had felt in years. And it was beautiful. Wow. And so when I was pregnant with Sky, he kind of, he kind of um, guided me along this path because I felt very spiritually connected to him. And so with, with, with Jonah, I had a hospital birth. I had an epidural. I had an OB. I had nurses, you know, kind of your textbook scenario. And with Sky, I had a home birth. I birthed him in a water uh, pool and um, I had a midwife and a doula and it was, it was entirely different. So I have these two varying perspectives um, when I do talk to people and can, can kind of connect on both levels. So that is kind of cool. And let's see, what, what else would you like to know? Cause I could go on for, like I said, I could go on for hours. About it. <laughs> no, that's that's great. That's fantastic. I can get you to my book. How about that? Yeah, let's get to the book. Like, because I'm excited about the book. Okay, so when I gave birth to Sky, about let's see, he must have been six months old at that point. I went to what was um, it was a, an event in Chicago, which. Hal Elrod had put on. Hal Elrod is um, an author of the book Miracle Morning, and there's a series of it at this point. And my husband and I had listened to the audio book and really connected with what he was saying. And so when Sky was born, we were balancing and juggling having a toddler and a newborn, being sleep deprived, you know, kind of just being just drained. We were to totally drained and we were not being fill up our bucket and we were still taking from that bucket. And so we felt like we needed a little kick in the butt to get us moving in the right direction again. And that's what Hal's book really provided for us. And so he put on this event in Chicago and I remember telling my husband, I really need to go to this event. And he was like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. There's something just telling me that I need to be there. And so somehow I convinced him that I had to go. And I did. And when I was there, I met Nicole Keating, our mutual friend. Yeah. And I also met Lindsay Ambrose. And we were partners in one of the kind of getting to know you uh, games that they had. And we started chatting and we realized that we had very similar missions. We were both young moms and moms with young children. And she had a podcast called Every Day, Every Mom. And so she interviewed me for the podcast. We scheduled the interview when we got home. And after our chat, we stayed on the phone for like an extra hour and just talked about what we valued and what our core beliefs were and um, what we wanted to do with our lives. And, 
And we decided to write a book together. And wow. from that conversation, that was two years ago. So from that conversation, we set regular times for us to, to connect over the phone. We gave each other like little mini deadlines of when we wanted to get certain portions of the book written. And uh, throughout that two-year process, we finished the book, we found a publisher, and now we're launching the book on Wednesday. So we're absolutely overjoyed to share this information with everyone who's ready and willing for it. That's incredible. And the, the book is actually launching on Wednesday the 9th. Is that right? The 9th of May? That is correct. Just in time for Mother's Day. Fantastic. So what, what I'll do is then by the time this is released, the book would already be out and I will put the link below for people to go and check out the book. It's absolutely incredible. The book is focused on something really amazing. It's about the mother and the child and um, it's, it's got loads of stuff you know, in terms of breastfeeding and the benefits of breastfeeding, etc. So I think there's a huge amount of value to be had from the book. I won't go too much into it. Um, I'll just put the link below. Go check it out. It's in the description. Okay. So the great thing is, by the way, you talked about holistic health. Okay. So this, this, this channel essentially is all about uh, holistic success. So it's success in every area of your life, including your health, your finances, um, your, your relationships, your spirituality, your career, your business, whatever it is, because I believe that you can't just focus on one area. You need to focus on every area of your life. Um, and it's a continuous journey. You can't just, you know, go and, you know, um, say that, okay, this is it. I've achieved whatever I wanted to achieve in this area. It's a journey. You're constantly trying to get better and improve something, et cetera, et cetera. But you talk about holistic health, which you, you said combines the mind and the body and the spirit. And I, and I absolutely love that. So let's dig deep there. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the mind, body, spirit connection? Absolutely. So there is a beautiful correlation between the mind, the body, and the spirit. And one of the ways to really tap into that, and we talk about that in the book as well, um, two are called meditation, of course, that we've heard of, and mindfulness. Yeah. And so with meditation, sometimes when people hear that word, they almost, um, they almost put up a guard because they feel like, oh, I don't know how to meditate. I'm going to do it wrong. It's too woo-woo, whatever their, their reasonings are. And really... Meditation is simply just matching your breath with your thoughts. And so if you can spend five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is, focusing on breath, the inhale, the exhale, the non-breath in between, that starts to slow the thoughts, the monkey mind, the, the mind chatter, and it allows you to start connecting to your higher self, to your spirituality, to your personal beliefs. And when you consistently practice meditation, then you're allowing time to honor your being instead of constantly giving to others, which is, you know, we want to give to others, but there also needs to be an element of reception, an element of receiving for your own self. And so meditation is, is very important, and I highly recommend it if you're not doing it already to start implementing little moments throughout your day to incorporate meditation. And mindfulness is something, like I said, we also speak about in the book. Um, mindfulness is, is about being a non-judgmental observer of yourself and also having this awareness. And when we can have an awareness of our thoughts and the thought patterns, so we can go down a specific rabbit hole or a downward spiral, of negative thinking if we start to become fearful or anxious about a certain situation or a person or what might be in the future. And very often when we're living in the future, instead of living in the present, we are fearful, we are anxious, we are paranoid, you know, all of these things, these negative vibrating frequency emotions can start to take over instead of breathing, taking a moment, to realize that there's really nothing we can do about the future except for be in the present. And when you catch yourself spiraled down, that's mindfulness. When you catch yourself thinking about something 
that doesn't serve you. That's mindfulness. And when you can take that pause, that breath before you talk, before you respond to somebody, then you're able to be much more present with yourself and much more present with the person that you're chatting with because that's what you want to be. You want to gift them with the you that's here right now, not the you that's half here and half in the future. Um, I, I am also a yoga teacher. And so I talk a lot about that forward thinking and, and that anxiety producing state versus what could be the polar opposite, which is depression and sadness, insomnia, those types of feelings and emotions tend to be because you're hanging on to the past. And when we're living in the past, once again, we're not here in the present moment. And so with those two um, kind of polar opposites, there's this beautiful place in the center. And that center is your groundedness. It's your, um, your connection to the moment. And so I find that that is where you can truly find that mind, body, spirit connection is when you are aware of yourself and your thoughts in this current moment. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I, first of all, I have to say, I love your definitions of meditation and mindfulness. I've never ever heard or read about them being described like that. I, I thought that was absolutely wonderful, just absolutely spot on, oh, cool. but also really simple. I mean, you said meditation is just matching your breath with your thoughts. And you said mindfulness is just being aware of what's going on inside. And that was so amazing because, you know, there's books and there's, you know, these videos and whole kind of, uh, you know, documentaries on this sort of thing but that just really simplified it down to the core and i love that and for people who you know are thinking about trying meditation or are not sure if it's the right thing for them hey it just it's not gonna hurt to try and i tell you what it will only benefit you because i love meditating i meditate on a regular basis daily basis um and it's just like hitting a reset right? Like you just yeah. come back to ground zero and then you can go on and get that boost and, and, you know, hit the next thing and crush that. So yeah, I absolutely love, love that. Um, cool. you talked about earlier about becoming, uh, you know, living a naturalistic lifestyle, right? So living an alternative sort of lifestyle where you are looking into natural medicine and, you know, natural ways of healing, etc. And then you became uh, a holistic life, uh, sorry, holistic health coach as a result. For those people who yes. are just not sure what that is or what it would be like for them to make that change, can you describe to them what it was like for you? What was your journey like when you were in the middle of cutting out gluten and, you know, cutting out dairy and finding out all these alternative sort of ways of eating and living? Yeah. So as I said, um, it was not easy. It was actually oftentimes very challenging and sometimes almost overwhelming because Food, just specifically with food, is not only nourishment for your body, but it's also a part of your culture. It's a part of your holidays. It's family. It tends to be friends. A lot of things are revolved around food. And so when you change your food, that's different from all of those things and all of those people and experiences. It tends to um, surprise people and, and everyone has their own reaction. Some people are very protective over their own way of eating and their own traditions. And I completely understand that. I have a lot of compassion and respect for it because I've gone through it myself. Um, in the beginning, it was, it was very challenging for my own mother and my mother-in-law because they were used to making certain foods for us. They were used to having holidays and having traditional foods that we no longer could eat. Mm. Or I should say we no longer chose to eat because it was our own choice. But what it came down to really simply was that our health and well-being was more important than hurting someone's feelings because it was not our intention to make someone feel bad about what they had prepared or made or, you know, they wanted to eat. That was their choice. And this was ours. And it was important for us to respect our own bodies and our own choices. So I, I wanted to share that because it can be challenging in the beginning, especially with the food aspect. 
And then when you start to transition more into that organic living lifestyle, um, other things start to pop up. So it's like my connection to spirituality and the meditation, the mindfulness, the, um, the mindset, all of those were really big shifting as well. Like everything, your perspective starts to change on everything and you start to question what you were taught because from the age of, well, from zero to seven, you're like a sponge. You're just recording everything that you hear, see, feel, think, everything is recording into your body and that starts to become your internal voice. So if you're constantly hearing, just for as an example, if you're constantly hearing your parents say, be careful, be careful, look at that, be careful, you start to hear because there's an element of, oh, be careful, there must be danger around every corner. So we have started to say to our own children, be aware, because when you're aware, then you're, there's no fear attached to that. It's just noticing what is around you. And... And that has been really interesting to see that kind of shift with our own language, not only in our heads, but with our children. Yeah. Um, let's see what else has shifted and changed. Okay. So for instance, um, we started with one pediatrician when Jonah was young, who was recommended to us. All of our friends were seeing this pediatrician and she was the person to go to. And as it turns out, after about a year, a little less than that, we realized that her values were not in alignment with our values. And so it was important for us to find a pediatrician that was more holistically minded and was more respectful of what we wanted to do and how we wanted to provide um, care for our children. And so you start to notice these things and these people that you're surrounding yourself with and you decide then, oh, is this person vibrationally on the same level as I am? Or are their core values and beliefs very different? And so you start to surround yourself with people that are much more like-hearted and like-spirited. And so that's a process, you know? Like I said, this was seven years ago that we started traveling down this, this hippie journey. And um, we've seen some very big shifts in ourselves, but also in our parenting and in our communication with each other and with other people. Um, and so it's important to start from a place of wonderment and curiosity instead of a place of judgment and fear. Because when you're open to receiving new information without judgment, then you can actually engage in that. But when you're listening to somebody and already you have this bias about them. You can't really receive the information because you already have an opinion about it. And um, so we've just found that tapping into our hearts, tapping into our intuition has provided much more value than, than listening to that voice of doubt. Right. If that yeah, if that is helpful, I hope. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Absolutely. Can you maybe point um, us towards some resources or some websites, etc., where we can go to find out more about naturalistic or organic or alternative sort of lifestyle and what that looks like and what does that involve? That's a wonderful question. There are so many out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to defer back to the Peaceful Mamas website. So it's peacefulmamasplural.com. And on there, it's actually the website is, by the time this airs, it will be up and running. So we're, we're just uh, revamping it at this moment. But we will have our experts. So in the book, we have interviewed 20 experts in alternative fields. So we have naturopaths, um, doulas, midwife. Um, we have, let's see, psychologists, registered nurses, yoga teachers, fitness gurus. We have the gamut of alternative healers. And so all of their information and their websites will be on our websites. And therefore, if there's a particular, um, 
space that someone wants to look into, they can kind of be geared by, by the specific person and their expertise. Fantastic. So for people in the audience, I highly encourage you to go and check out that book and also the website, both below, uh, both, both links, can't talk, both <laughs> links will be below in the description. So make sure you go and check them out if you are interested. Um, okay. So Natalie, what are your daily routines or rituals or habits that you practice based on whatever you have learned on your journey? Yeah, so um, we actually, the framework in Peaceful Mama is we give tools on how you can implement self-care practices. And we have an acronym called MAMA. So it's like MAMA with a sigh out. It's M-A-M-A-H-H. -H. And it stands for mindfulness, affirmation, meditation, or I'm sorry, movement, uh, abundance, health, and heart. And so each of these, we've given tips and tools on how you can incorporate those throughout your day. So for instance, you asked about my personal practices. So all of those are incorporated in my own personal practice. I meditate every single day. I am very into the mindfulness aspect. I teach and practice yoga every day. Um, I love to read and write. So I make sure that I make time for those as well. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. And, and the thing is with being a mom is that it's no longer all about you. And, and so you think, oh, I have to give everything to everyone else. And then you're left with nothing, complete depletion, which is so self-sacrificing and it doesn't actually end up helping anyone because mm -hmm. you're not presenting yourself as the best version of yourself. And so I suggest and invite anyone that's listening to start shifting that mindset instead of thinking about self-care as a selfish act, which oftentimes people think, you know, oh, well, if I do something for myself, it's just selfish. And I, I like to flip the switch and instead think of it as self-preservation. So you're, you're preserving yourself so that you're able to be the person that you ultimately want to be, not just so that you can look in the mirror and smile and be proud of yourself at the end of the day, but so that when you are interacting and communicating with your spouse or your friends or your children, that you are that best version. And that end being self-preservation, not selfish. And so if you can take tiny moments throughout your day to be present with the mindfulness, to sit in silence and meditate, to provide your physical body with movement and with optimal nourishment, then you're starting to make these slow, small, really powerful changes that over time shift everything for you. There is a Tanzanian pro uh, proverb that says, um, little by little, a little becomes a lot. Mm. And so when in terms of self-care and self-preservation, it's true. Sometimes just having five minutes locking yourself in your closet and you know sitting down and breathing, when you come out of that closet, you're much better than when you went into it. You know, So the kids can wait five minutes for you to just get back to your center as opposed to you screaming and doing things and saying things that later you're like, damn it, why did I say that? Why did I do that? You know, which often happens. I mean, hey, guilt is, is, ends up being a part of motherhood as well, but it doesn't have to be. The shame doesn't have to be there. And when you're, when you're practicing these acts of self-care, then you, you minimize that shame and guilt, which is huge. That's a beautiful message. And I love the, the way you actually talked about, uh, you know, being selfish versus, you know, self-preservation. Um, I thought that was really, really beautiful. Um, and I think it's so important for a lot of people, they hold themselves back, but it's so important that you do actually look after yourself. You put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you actually go exactly. and put the oxygen mask on somebody else, uh, because you can't pour from an empty glass. So I love that. Exactly. That was, that was absolutely amazing. So Natalie, um, very, very quickly, what impact do you hope to make with your book? I hope 
that we can create a ripple effect of peace throughout the world. And so for us, when we were trying to come up with um, not just a title, but like a mission for our book, it was that peace begins with the mother. And when the mother is peace, then the children feed off of that, husband, the spouse feeds off of that, and then they take it with them where they're going. So whether it's preschool or a place of business or a community center, when you can shine your own light and provide this aura of peace and sanity, then that creates a ripple effect throughout the world. And so I think that our main goal is to positively impact homes, families, mothers, and and inevitably the world. Amazing. That's beautiful. Natalie, this has been an absolutely phenomenal conversation. Uh, despite the fact that the connection was a bit weird and, you know, it, there was, the message kept popping up saying, yo, uh, you know, internet connection is unstable. Um, but despite that, this was an absolutely amazing conversation. I absolutely loved it. And there was just so much information packed into it. I learned lots of stuff uh, and we went down so many different rabbit holes. Um, you know what? I'd love to have you back on sometime for round two. We can maybe do round two again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that'll be great. But before, before you go, I quickly just want to ask you, how can people reach out to you and how can they help you right now? Okay. Thank you. Um, so the title of the book is called Peaceful Mama, The Mind, Body, and Baby Connection. So that will be available on Amazon and we'll have a Kindle version as well. So there's a, you know, the actual book that you can order, or if you're a laptop or iPad kind of person, you can get it on there. Our website is peacefulmamas.com. And if people could start to follow us on Instagram at Peaceful Mamas, that would be great. Um, we're, we're starting to build up that tribe of people. And we will eventually start to launch a peaceful mama circle. So once you've read the book or you're starting to read the book and you want some support, online support, virtual support, we will be there for you. And there will be opportunities to chat with our experts, to have live Q and A's. And if you're a part of a book club and you want to suggest our book, that would be great. Uh, you can also find me personally at the modern and modern hippie is H I P P I E. So modern And if you would like to reach me via email, um, Natalie at the modern or Natalie at peaceful Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, for people in the audience, make sure you go and check out the book. You go and connect with Natalie. She has a lot of uh, value to offer. And guess what? I learned a lot from this conversation and I'm sure you had lots of amazing takeaways as well. Comment below and tell us what were your main takeaways were from this conversation? What resonated with you? And what are your daily rituals? How are you self-preserving yourself? before going and helping out other people or, you know, just basically giving, constantly giving to others. When you go to work, when you come back home to your family, your friends, your neighbors, whoever, like you're always giving. So what are you doing to, for your self-preservation? That's my question to you. So comment below and let us know. Like Natalie said, peace starts with the mother. Now, despite the fact that I'm really feeling left out here, I would say <laughs> that that was the most important message <laughs> from this conversation. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Um, she is on a wonderful journey and she has a really, really amazing mission that she wants to create uh, world peace and it all starts with the mother. That's the message behind the book and behind this conversation. I strongly urge you to go ahead and connect with Natalie. So with that, guys, as always, I really appreciate you spending this time with me. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel simply because how else will you stay up to date with all the other amazing conversations we're gonna have with more of our guests. And 
I also want to encourage you guys to share this conversation, especially if you know that somebody is a mom uh, who is close to you, maybe your sister, maybe your own mom, I don't know, your mom maybe, um, your you know friend, whoever, or maybe it's somebody who is thinking of becoming a mom or is about to become a mom. And I think for them, yeah. this will be absolute gold. So I'm really excited about this new book um, and I can't wait to, get my paws on it and, and look through it because it's such a wonderful message. So naturally, with that, thanks again for being here. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much. This was wonderful. Yeah, this was an amazing conversation. I can't get my words. I don't know what's going on. I can't get my words. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So naturally, thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Guys, hustle hard, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.